Hey everybody, it's Peter and we're back here at Extreme Torque Motorsports and yesterday I took a look at the Can-Am Riker Rally. It's sitting just off camera right now and it's a lot like this one behind me, but this one behind me has some accessories. So what I'm going to do in this video is take a closer look at their sport model and if you haven't seen the rally model, make sure you check out the link. I'll put a link in the description to that one. Uh, like I said, did that one yesterday, but as I've gotten to know these and I'll be very clear, I don't know these as well as I know some of the other products I've been looking at, but they're super cool and these are the kind of things that you once you see them in person you just absolutely fall in love with them there are so many cool little features so many you know things about the design that make it such a cool thing to ride and what I'm gonna do is show you the sport model today in detail but we're gonna to touch on the rally because of some of the accessories and I think Really with these things, it's the accessories that really make it for you. There's some interesting pieces uh, that we're gonna talk about, even with just the colors that are kind of cool. And I'm gonna try to fill you in on what these are when you come to buy and order one, because there's a process there of decisions that you're gonna have to make. And I'm gonna try to help you walk through so you have a little bit of context so when you go on the website and build it, or when you come to the dealer, you have a sense of what you're doing. So again, Start with the sport, talk about accessories, and the overall sort of process of what you might need to know to think about buying these or to prepare for buying these. So hopefully that makes sense. And again, here at Extreme Sports, Extreme Torque Motorsports, I'm in the Fredericton location. There's three locations here in New Brunswick. If you need any information on them, on these things, they are awesome. They're giving me my information. They're helping me give you information. So do me a favor, hit a like on this video and hit subscribe because if there's something that I don't cover in this video, you can ask me in the comments and I will come back to you both in the comments section and in future videos because I have complete access to their entire product line and they're encouraging me to come back and answer your questions questions and that's why they're kind of awesome. They care about the customers whether they're here in Fredericton, here in New Brunswick or even around the world. We'll get the answers you need and help you out. All right so let's get going with this review. So I want to start off by just hopping across this thing. What's cool about this is we talked about this in yesterday's video. A lot of people think of this as a motorcycle, other people don't. You have to kind of think of it as its own thing. I really like to think of it as kind of a super lightweight sports car. And we talked about that yesterday, how it's got that sort of sports car kind of look, that Indy car kind of look, F1 car kind of look out front. And really that's all about the handling. But of course the seating position here is very cruiser-like, very, you know, very motorcycle-like. And of course handlebars make it very motorcycle-like. Couple things I want to address right off the bat. I noticed yesterday the seating position was different here on the sport than on the rally that I sat on. And I started digging into things and you know, these are things I should have known before I did the video, but these things are crazy adjustable. So you can adjust the foot pegs right here. So that's great to find the perfect seating position for you. For me, I'd kind of like it a little bit more forward on this one. Uh, my left foot's actually more forward than my right foot on this one because they've been moving things around, but you can adjust this up for a couple things. One, to fit you where you want it exactly, which is a really key piece, the foot pegs and the handlebars, and we'll dig into this stuff closer. But the other thing you can do is you can share this unit with someone else and set it up perfectly for them every time. And then the third thing you, do, you can do, because they're so easily adjustable, is you can adjust it while you're riding. So if you wanna kinda of be sport riding and have the handlebars in a different position, and then you kinda of wanna relax and bring, put them to a different position, you can do that. And what that does is make this way more comfortable than a lot of other things that you can ride or drive. It just gives you that fresh air experience, but it also kind of makes it something that you can have sporty, that you can have relaxed, and make it super comfortable and set up just for you. So to me, that's a really cool thing. And we're gonna dig into some of these things as we get a little closer. And like I said, we're gonna talk about the accessories. So let's talk about this sport model for a second. You can see here, it looks pretty sporty. We're gonna talk about the panels in a second, but a couple things that I wanna point out are the wheels. We looked at the rally yesterday. The rally's got the wheels. I don't know if you can see it on camera right now. Yeah, those white wheels up there. That's the rally model here. This one has different wheels. Now the front wheels are both 16 inch wheels on the rally and on the sport model. On the sport model though, it has a larger diameter rear wheel, so less sidewall, but a larger wheel. And what that does is gives it that sporty look. So you have a 16 back here, 16 in the front. On the rally, you had a 16s in the front and a 15 on the rear. So you get a little bit more of a sport feel and it really does look like a sports car, supercar kind of look. It's super, super cool. The other thing you have is a little bit less ground clearance than on the rally. Remember the rally is designed to be able to go onto those dirt roads, gravel roads, give you a little bit more clearance. And I described it kind of like something that you would think of like an adventure bike. It can take you down the road, but can take you off road. A little bit of an SUV version of this. This one in the sport model, it can be looked at as a midline model in the lineup compared to the rally, which is the top line lineup, but it also takes away some of the things that you don't need 
to just have a sport model. So let's start digging into the front end of this. We're gonna work our way through and then we're gonna talk about some of the accessories you can put on that really make it your own and really make it come to life and fit what you wanna do with it. And that's the cool thing about these. They're super versatile. You can make it do whatever you wanna do. So I absolutely love this view of this vehicle, this bike, this trike, whatever you want to call it. It's very low. You've got the headlights up top, but then again, all the weight is down low. And when you think about a vehicle that's a really sporty vehicle to drive, you want all your weight low and between the wheels. And, you know, if you think about a car with minimal overhang, that's something like, a, you know, the Mini Cooper, for instance, with minimal overhangs front and rear. That's part of what it takes to have a great handling vehicle. So you've got the weight down really low and in between the suspension and in between the front wheels. And the wheels are actually the furthest part forward on this. So you've kind of got things kind of set between the wheelbase. All of the design of this makes this thing just a great handling vehicle. Now, what's cool about this is with only a single rear wheel, if you've ever driven a lightweight rear wheel drive sports car, you can have some playfulness in the back end. And that's what you have here. And there really isn't lightweight rear wheel drive sports cars anymore because of safety regulations, all kinds of things uh, that sort of have bloated up vehicles over time. So this takes everything back to the basics, gives you that single rear wheel, which has tons of traction for getting going, but can feel just a little bit playful. And again, it's got traction control. It's not something that's gonna slip out on you, but it really adds fun. And that's what you have to think about when you think of these. These aren't just practical, stable motorcycles. They are an absolute blast to drive because they're designed to be low and fun. So you have a different suspension setup in here. There's no adjustments like on the Rally. The Rally had those multiple setups, uh, so you could really adjust that suspension. You've got it nice and down low. You've got disc brakes inside each of these front two tires here. And the real key with these front tires here is you can see, you know, they're not massively wide car tires, but they do have a better footprint for things like handling and for things like, uh, you know, you know, braking especially. So when you think of this sport model and you wanna fly through some corners You've got good traction because when you compare to a motorcycle, the motorcycle tire, tire is round like this, but it's also curved here. So what actually touches the ground is very minimal. These are going to have better tread wear life than a typical motorcycle, but you're also going to have good traction on the ground. Now that's key because as you dive into a corner, if you think about a traditional trike with the two wheels on the rear and one on the front, you don't have that handling benefit that you do get with something like this. So when we think of this sport model, this pretty value model, it's that midline model in the lineup, you're losing some of those rally off-road capabilities, but you maintain everything you need to have for sport. Good traction here for cornering and for braking. On a motorcycle, on a car, on a trike, anything you do, when you brake, all the weight moves forward. Well, when the weight moves forward on this, you've got a lot of traction here and super good confidence. So whether you're looking for something that's good in dry pavement or if it's wet, you've got a lot of tire on the road and it gives you a lot of confidence when you're driving. That's what that's cool about the design of these that I don't think people are talking about enough. So this is another view I like. Let's ignore the front half and take a look at just the back half of this bike and, or trike or whatever you want to call it. What's cool about this is you have your suspension sort of in here. There is actually some rear suspension adjustment and that's going to be important as you start sticking passengers or weight on the back. We're going to talk about that when we start working our way to accessories. But what's cool about this is you can see all of this open space, this long sort of swing arm here. Again, it looks very futuristic, especially in this view here, but what that does is it moves all the weight forward forward and has like not a lot of weight back here. What that does, again, centralizing that weight, it's all about handling. So a lot of people think these things were designed for stability and sure, that's an inherent benefit of the design, but really what you have is something that from an automotive standpoint, from a motorcycle type standpoint, weight is forward, centralized between the wheels and down low. And you can really see how that design would benefit something that is absolutely a blast to drive. I want to take a quick look at this rear suspension here because you do have quite a bit of adjustment still here. You have the preload adjuster here, which is going to be more of a tools type adjustment. But over here, there is a little remote adjustment type thing there. And that is that red knob. In fact, we'll show it to you in just a second that allows you to have those more adjustments. The one thing I like is you have a huge shock here. Now, one of the benefits of having a larger shock is you could put smaller shocks like right here, two on each side. That's what they used to do on old fashioned motorcycles. Anything modern in a motor modern motorcycle or modern one rear wheel vehicle 
uh, has a longer shock. The longer shock gives you a lot more control and precision in how it handles the power, the braking, everything that it needs to face uh, as it's going down the road. So you have a really good precise control over the back end here through a quality shock. Let's just quickly show you that other side adjustment and then we're gonna show you some of the controls and features of uh, how this vehicle works. All right, so I'm on the opposite side of the vehicle here. If I'm facing forward, this is the right side of the vehicle, um, the passenger side, if it was a car, for instance. And you can see this is that remote sort of adjustment right here. So again, the rally has this in the rear, but the rally also has that type of control in the front here. Let's just zoom right all the way in so you can see what we're looking at. Simple knob there. You can sort of see on the very bottom, there's a number two there. That's a setting it's at, uh, so that's multiple settings there. We're going to go back out to a slightly wider angle, look down here at the foot peg. Again, this foot peg is adjustable. It's uh, actually a different uh, spot than the opposite side there. But as we take a look at the foot peg here, one of the differences between the Rally and this is the Rally had that big rubber pad on here. This is a steel, metal, definitely metal uh, type thing. It does have some grip to it, almost feels like a bed liner of a truck, but I think it's just the, the texture of the metal. And you've also got the grip in there. So. The rally, again, that rubbery thing for, you know, those washboard type roads gives you a little bit more vibration resistance, although this still has lots of grip and is very solid. These are also much larger than your typical motorcycle. They can be because it's not cornering and leaning, so they don't need to keep them real tiny. So you've got some room to move around here. You've got some room to move around there. And again, they're adjustable. They can move back and forth. You'll also notice the brake pedal. That works exactly like a motorcycle. Your right side has your brake pedal, but that is your only brake on the vehicle. So it's super simple. You don't have to blend brakes front and rear like on a motorcycle. You just Tap that, tap that pedal with your foot and the entire vehicle is braking, uh, you know, super, super simple. So with the right side having that brake, that means what happens on the right side handlebar? Well, the right side handlebar is your throttle. That's all the throttle movement you have. That's all you need. And this is an automatic transmission. So there is no need to shift gears. You just twist and go. You'll notice also no brake lever here. Again, we talked about that. This is uh, more automotive than motorcycle in that sense. So super simple. Your hand's always on the throttle, always exactly where you need it. And uh, we noticed on the rally, there was some extra little guards up here. You could get those on this as an accessory, but you don't have them on the sport. So again, simplicity, minimalistic, uh, lightweight. That's what this sport is all about. But the thing is, it's a super simple sporty vehicle to drive. Most sporty vehicles often have manual transmissions or are motorcycles with manual transmissions. This is something that just roll on, roll off, uh, very simple to control and your hands are always there. So we'll come across to the far side here. And I'm gonna zoom in from this side here just so you can sort of see what we're talking about let's see if we can zoom all the way in so on the far side you do have um, you know, all your controls just like a motorcycle but again no clutch lever because again super simple to drive you don't have to worry about anything like clutch so very motorcycle like in other than no clutch lever headlights is high beams and low beams they're always on on this vehicle you got your signal lights there there and cancel press in your horn down here again very typical motorcycle stuff but you'll notice this button right here you can adjust that up or down uh, however you want it to make sure your thumb can reach it that's your cruise control and we're going to talk about the way that this bike can be used as a cruiser especially when you start setting it up with the accessories that we're gonna talk about in a second here. So now we're back on the left-hand side, the driver's side if you want, if it was a car, that kind of thing. Uh, we're zoomed out here, and I wanna sort of show you where we are before we zoom in. This is your key, this is your parking brake. Those are the two pieces we're gonna be focusing on in just a second, so we're gonna zoom all the way in. And the key is not like a typical key. It is or not like a typical motorcycle type key. Let's see if I can keep it in focus today. I couldn't do that yesterday very well. So that is what your key looks like. It is just an electronic connection. So that plastic tab, uh, clicks onto the ball over there, and that's what you have for a key. Super simple, fits well in your pocket, kind of cool, and uh, you know, kind of confusing to anybody who's looking for a regular key. It confused me at first because I'm not as familiar with KM stuff, especially uh, their on road vehicles. I didn't expect to see something like that. And then you have essentially your parking brake here. So when this thing is stationary right now, um, I can move it around just like I could a motorcycle in neutral. Uh, but you have to have that parking brake off. So you can see this is your parking brake. It's easily reachable from the driver's environment, easily just easy to turn on. So it's again, a, a left hand switch. I'll sit on the vehicle right now. And you can see if I, I don't know if my legs are in the shot there, but you can put that up and down, very easy to reach just below the handlebar there. And if you drop it down, you can move it into, um, 
into a, essentially a neutral and push the bike around, but it also gives you the ability to uh, easily reach that below your handlebar. You know, let me show you right here. There we go. We're straight below your handlebar, easy to reach it. And again, the dash does indicate when you're in park, which essentially means your parking brake is on. So those are the controls and how to operate. There's only one other piece, which we'll show you down here. Let's see if we can do this in one take as well. Uh, this is a little bit of a shifter right there. Looks like a motorcycle shifter. Let's just zoom in for you so you can see it. So that's what we're talking about right there, that little motorcycle type shifter, but we're gonna have to zoom out to show you how it works. Now they did show me a little trick yesterday. You would think that you could put uh, your toe underneath that and pull it back, but it's actually a little hard to do that. So if you push down like this and roll it back, that's in reverse like that, and that's drive like that, or forward and reverse right there. So you can see it's very easy to operate, and the nice thing is I can't even see it when I'm riding, so it's not in my way. So if I wanna move my feet around or adjust the foot peg anywhere, uh, very simple to do, very simple to get comfortable and move your feet around. So again, as you're on a longer trip, you got some freedom of movement, and it looks like a motorcycle shifter, but again, it's just forward and reverse down there. Those are all the controls to operate the vehicle. We'll quickly show you the dash here. We've got the key on, so I'm just gonna tap it without starting it here. Let's zoom all the way in again. This is your basic dash. Temperature gauge down here, some information down there. Fuel gauge on the far side. Trip computers up top, odometer. It says eco mode right now. I'm not sure, I have to dig into if that's a mode or just a setting. Uh, the park right now, if we turn the parking brake off, which is right here, you can see I'm in the forward gear, so it shows you forward or reverse. If we were to put a passenger on this, which uh, we can do at a later time, it would show you that a passenger's on this. And then again, this one's set for miles per hour right now, but that is your uh, speedometer dead smack in the center. Super simple stuff, very clear, and it is attached to the handlebar, so it does turn with the uh, handlebars there. Let's show you a little bit more with the handlebar adjustment here while we're here. All right, so we're gonna continue to play with this sort of wide angle tight shot here just to give you a sense of what's going on. So again, these look sort of like motorcycle handlebars, but you can see because they are sort of curved like this, they can rotate up, they can rotate down. Uh, you can do, you know, change the sort of feel. And where they are is pretty cool, works great for me. But what's cool is you can pop this open and you can move these handlebars forward and back. And you can see how easy that would be to do. And you can see there's a, quite the track here. So we zoom right in there. You've got quite a long track there to really get that adjustment right. It doesn't look too long, maybe on camera, but um, it's absolutely something that gives you a whole change of feeling for how this bike feels. And what's cool is you can do it on the fly. So again, it's not just about setting it up once and forgetting it. It's not just about setting it up for two different riders and leaving it. You can adjust that, uh, you know, pull over the side of the road, adjust that uh, while you're riding to really give you that sense of, uh, you know, comfort, freedom, that kind of thing that you need. So really cool to have that sort of standard on this model. Now let's take a look, actually before we'll show you one little storage thing, and then we're gonna start taking a look at some of the accessories that you can add. And there's a lot but we'll show you just a few. So when we move to accessories, we're gonna talk about uh, storage. And again, you press on this and open it up. I already have it sort of pre-opened up here. You've got an owner's manual in here. You've got a number of things in here, but you do have a storage area in here, which has a little bit of an odd shape. So again, this isn't gonna hold a ton of stuff. It's not meant to hold stuff. In fact, it's limited you to 4.4 pounds. I'm sure if you put five pounds in there, you'd probably be fine. But again, a little bit of a storage compartment here that does have a rubber gasket to seal things. Again, I'm not sure how fully waterproof it would be if you had a driving rain and you were driving in there, but the general sense is it's gonna keep your stuff pretty dry. Uh, there are two USB ports, a single, uh, looks like a 12 volt port, but they actually have two USB plugs, just standard USB plugs in there. So you can keep a device charged or even two devices charged in there. So you can drop your cell phone in there or something like that and make sure it's charged when you go. So that is one piece of the storage on this unit. The next piece of storage is all about the accessories. Let's move over to some accessories that I think make a lot of sense on something like this. So one of the cool things that people here at Extreme Torque Motorsports told me about this that I didn't expect, and again, I'm still learning about these to make sure I can tell you everything you wanna know, but one of the things I didn't expect was these panels that are on all these units, they actually don't come with the unit itself. So what happens is these ship to the dealer without these colored panels and you can choose, and there's various pricing things for some of like the metallic ones, I'm sure they cost a little bit more than some of the plain color ones, but there's various pricing models to allow you to choose exactly what you want. So like I said, they come just sort of black like this and the panels are something that you add. So that's a key piece of when you're thinking about buying one of these things, you have to think about what colors you want because it's not gonna just show up to the dealer in the color you want, like something like the Spider or like many other vehicles. The Rikers are gonna come just in black, you choose your color. But then you're also gonna, gonna wanna think about how you're gonna wanna use this. And we're gonna show you some of the pieces here, like the seat and other pieces that you may wanna add yourself, just so you're ready to take it home the way you want it to go. 
So one of the key accessories for something like this is definitely going to be a passenger seat. Now what's cool about this one here is it sort of folds down so you have that sleek look if nobody's here. You could still some tie some things down in there. This is a firm, it actually feels like a metal back. Actually I think that is metal. And then you have these hand grips that are coming as well. Now this hand grip here is plastic here but full on rubber grippy stuff here. So if they want to hang on behind you or beside here you've got a really good grippy area. We're going to show you this closer in just a second but I'm sitting this far away because I want to show you uh, with my um, you know what it like what it's like for me to sit on there so again these rear foot pegs they fold up they kind of look like an extra handles if you were to tie things down you have a firm area where you could pull up on to tie things down again we'll show you this all closer in a second but you put them down you put this back up and you can hop across here now i'm going to sit on the driver's area and then i'm going to move my way back up like this because you can see the foot pegs everything about this is solid and comfortable so you're sitting higher than the driver and again these hand grips are perfect you can hang on like this you can hang on like that I really think the backrest is, a, is worth doing as well because you don't really have to worry about always, you know, your passenger always gripping on. If they're a little bit nervous about being on there, it's just a super comfortable area where you've got control here. You don't have to hold the rider, but you can. Now what's cool about this is this isn't like a motorcycle with the leaning where your rider has to lean with you. So on this, they're just hanging on and enjoying everything the same way you are with that you know, automatic transmission and that kind of thing. They just can hang back here, relax. You know, as you go around corners, they're gonna need something solid to hang on to because there's still some G-forces, this is staying level, but they're really gonna be able to separate their hands out and have a really good grip. So I really like the way this rear seat is done. It's comfortable enough for a six footer like myself. If you're smaller than me, not a big deal. And again, you could easily sit a six footer in front of me, six foot behind. So you've got tons of space up here, even on this smaller Riker model compared to something like the Spider. So really well done. Let's take you in a little closer, show that to you, and then we'll move around and show you a few other accessories that I really like. All right, so I'm gonna freehand some of this stuff. So I've only got one hand free. I've got one hand on the camera here, but let's show you these foot pegs here. Again, you can kind of see that texture to them here. This is all solid stuff, like really solid metal. So like I said, you can stand on it, no problem. But when they come up like this, and fold up, they give you a really clean look back there. They look factory, which looks pretty cool. And again, because of the angle, if you ever to tie stuff down here, you could pull up, like pull up on this uh, with a you know a tie down or a bungee net or something like that, and it would still be solid for you. And of course, these are super solid as well. So these are the hand grips I was holding on to. So I'm gonna try to show you the angle underneath these because it actually fits your hand really well. It's hard to sort of describe, but because they come in, my hand curls around and I have a good grip with my fingers on there. It's hard to do it on the angle I'm at, but when you're sitting on it, they're kind of perfectly done. And of course, you also have this area back here, which you can grip as well, which is good for the braking forces. You're gonna to wanna to hold on behind you when they brake. And again, this thing can produce good braking forces because you have two solid contact patches on a lightweight vehicle that really allow you to, you know, have some fun braking and, you know, do some, you know, just some extra G-forces, both accelerating, cornering, and braking. Now this piece here folds down. You can't hear it because I'm wearing a mic, but it has a bit of a tink to it. So there's definitely some solid metal there. And again, if you fold these up like they are and that down like that, as you step away from this vehicle, you can really see that it still maintains that kind of that profile, especially if you had a rider sitting on there. So again, you can swap this out as sort of a quick, uh, release type thing and put on other um, you know luggage and that kind of thing for cargo now if you want to take a little bit of something who here they've got a pretty cool uh, can-am accessory right there obviously that'll fit your cell phone it's got some plastic in front it's going to give you some um, water resistance and this has a um, you know another, another bag inside there so for me that's not something i would get but you do have that option it just clips on there like a typical tank bag this here though is an option that i think i would definitely get because what this does here is while you, you know, while I appreciate the open air aspect and my current motorcycle is open air, a little bit of a windscreen on this, and this is height adjustable. So if we take a look at this, it's a quick release height adjustable windshield here. You can just pull this down like this and you can move it up or down. I haven't got uh, two hands, so I'm not gonna do that, but it works like a bicycle quick release on the wheel. And that allows you to have a height adjustable windshield. Now a height adjustable windshield is really important on a motorcycle type vehicle, not so much for wind protection, but just the, depending on how the wind is hitting you, sometimes the wind can come off there and buff it on your helmet. 
So you can just move it down, move it up a little bit to take that uh, buffeting away, but it does take the pressure off of your chest and off of your body, which means that you can ride this all day long. And that's what I really like about this is I never really viewed the Riker as something that you could turn into a touring bike. I always thought you'd have to move the Spider, and the Spider is more expensive, which we'll show you in a future video. But this setup with the passenger setup, a little bit of a windscreen, that alone changes these bikes, changes these trikes for me into something that is a fun sport cruiser, a fun dirt road adventure bike type trike, or you can set it up like this and make it into a bit of a cruiser. It gives you enough wind protection, enough uh, you know accessories just as it is to make it a really versatile thing. So let's wrap this one up and talk about these three bikes here that are sitting here. These sort of rally setup to tour, the sport bike here, and the sort of base rally, uh, you know, just a fun, you know, hooligan type vehicle. So let's wrap up by talking about who this is for. We talked primarily about the Sport, and the Sport is kind of a fancy marketing name. This is the midline model. Now it does offer you Sport. There's 100%, that's what it does. But for me, I might wanna step up to the Rally, and we'll talk about why. You can customize this up. If you like the Sport look, and don't need the adjustable suspension, and you're fine with that lower center of gravity, which again, is going to give you that lower center of gravity is gonna give you an inherent advantage in just sport riding. The other thing is the sport has a sport riding mode where the rally has a rally riding mode. So there are some differences between them. But for me, this midline model, this sport model is going to be perfect for people who really wanna have that fun handling. It's got a little firmer seat here, a lot more like a sport bike, um, you know, kind of holds you firmly in place. You really feel like you're kind of glued to this unit as you drive it. And that is who I think this is for. Someone who wants to just sort of have that really sporty sports car-like feel with an open air environment. It's better than a convertible it handles like a sports car. So that's where this is. For me, I think I would move to the Rally. The Rally has a driver comfort seat, which you could add to this, but that driver comfort seat to me is probably gonna be a little bit more comfortable on a longer ride. Now again, if you're not doing a ton of long rides or if it just fits you fine, again, the seat fits me fine, but when there's an option for more comfort, I'm getting older, I like more comfort. The Rally has that standard. And to me, the one we looked at yesterday when we really went through the Rally, the base model, perfectly fine. But the few accessories, those rear seat there and the ability to add some luggage accessories on the back there, the windshield up there, the few little accessories, and I love the adjustable suspension on the Rally, tiny bit extra ground clearance, so means I could tour anywhere I wanted to go and go down any dirt road, any rough road, to me, the Rally is really that sweet spot. But we haven't even showed you the base model 600cc, which we could have on in a future video as well. If you just want an around town, super efficient, fun, but not quite as peppy, not quite a sporty model, there's still a less expensive, and it's less expensive than even my motorcycle. So again, a lot of people think these are way more expensive than a traditional motorcycle. There's still a 600cc Riker, which we can talk about in the future. So who are they for? They're not necessarily for motorcyclists. Sometimes this is viewed as motorcyclists who want something stable. These are about having fun. They're built like a sports car with the open air riding uh, of a motorcycle. So the sport model fits a nice niche here of something that is absolutely built for handling. The rally steps it up as something that can go outside uh, of a little more dirty, uh, dirt roads, rougher roads and have fun that way. All of them are gonna handle like a sports car, but you can even tour on that. So if you wanna know more about these, make sure you like this video, comment below. We wanna thank Extreme Torque Motorsports here in New Brunswick. There are three locations. I'm in their Fredericton location right now. We are gonna have more vehicles like this. If you have questions about these three-wheel vehicles, we're gonna talk about the Spider, which has a whole bunch of different models as well, and is a bigger, a little bit more expensive version of this, and there's a reason for those extra expense as well. There's a lot of features on that that aren't on this. If you wanna talk about the lower end version of this, we're gonna have that eventually. Anything you want to know about these, Extreme Torque Motorsports gives me complete access to their entire product line. You let me know in the comments what you want to see, and I'll work with them to get what I can for you on video. Thanks everybody for watching. Check these out. If you want to see Extreme Torque Motorsports, the link is in the description of this video. You got to see these in person to experience them for yourself. I can't do it justice on video, but I'll do my best for you. Thanks everybody for watching.